Now, what I'd like to, like to do right now is to take you on a little journey <coughs> that, that starts 15 years ago. And it's been um, kind of my journey through, uh, through uh, in, in trying to impact and improve this problem in the profession. And I still have hope that, that before I leave the profession, that I that indeed will at least be talking about something other than 10 to 30 percent. I won't fix it, but I'm but I'm hoping that, that that maybe I can move the needle a little bit on the uh, 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 on the process. But about 15 years ago, my colleague Reed Bates and I began taking a serious look at this, and and. You know, we, 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 here at LHU, our human resource development program is what we call a performance-based HRD program. And so we were studying learning transfer, and one of the things that we, that we noticed at that time in the literature was there was no general agreement about the factors that potentially could serve as barriers or catalysts to learning transfer. And of course, if there's no agreement on what the factors are, there was no way for an organization to diagnose its learning transfer system. And there was certainly, in the research literature, everybody had their own measures, everybody used different scales, um, everybody was looking at different factors, and we said, it, it, it's no wonder that we, that we haven't reached any consensus on anything. So, we set out, next slide please, you know, we being uh, the professor types, we said, well, we'll just, we'll just fix that. And, and, and so we created what we call the Learning Transfer System Inventory, or LTSI. And, and I have to tell you that, that when, when we were sitting around my office back then, and, and I think back to those days, and, and uh, we put our feet up on the desk, and we created this, we never, ever could have imagined the journey that it would take us on. And it's been a fabulous journey, you know, like bringing, bringing me to speak to you here, here today. Um, and so it's been a remarkable process that, that uh, uh, and I'll tell you a little more about that as I go here. But what this instrument does is to measure 16 factors in the organization, in the, in the transfer system, that can either be a barrier or a catalyst to learning transfer. And each one of them represents what we call a leverage point, a, a potential to change the system. And it, it's a survey that it can be both a diagnostic tool in practice but it's research quality, meaning that we have gone through um, actually three different versions and 15 years of statistical research to arrive at, the, at, the, at the, uh, these factors. These factors were um, derived from statistical analysis. Um, let, let me just stop and, and ask, how, how much should I go into the statistical process here? I'm, I'm, help me. Um, and I guess um, it should be more at the surface. Okay. <laughs> I, I think every... Everyone in the class just breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I, I just wanted to, wanted to know. Um, so, let's just say it's had a lot of statistical analysis to arrive at these 16 factors. Um, 
Now, uh, next slide, please. So what we have, what the, what the survey instrument has is 51 items. They have a five-point Likert scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Eleven of the factors pertain to a specific training program. And the reason for this is that when you think about learning transfer system, the system changes. Um, for example, in most organizations, if you have a technical training program, there's a lot more reinforcement and support for that than maybe a soft skills program like interpersonal communication. Um, and so the dynamics in the organization as to whether the organization supports and reinforces transfer or, or doesn't can vary depending on the particular training program. So 11 of these factors pertain to a specific training program and five are for training in general in, in the organization. Now, next slide, please. So 15 years ago, we started this process. Um, and what's been amazing about it, that the instrument has now been used in uh, t about 25 different countries. And, and we never imagined that that, that, that would occur. Um, What's even more amazing, we have the data from uh, 17 of those countries in 14 different languages, over 6,000 respondents to the, to the instrument. Uh, and these languages are incredibly diverse, uh, from Chinese, Malaysian, uh, Arabic, Middle East, uh, French, German, um, obviously uh, uh, English, very diverse culture, very diverse languages. Uh, and, and much to our amazement, frankly, this, th these 16 factors have statistically held up, have statistically been confirmed in all of those languages. And what we've been able to arrive at is 51, these 51 items in the latest version um, work in all of those languages and all of those countries. And I have to tell you, we never imagined that that was going to be the case. Um, because our early predictions were that cultural differences around the world would result in different instruments for different cultures. And so it's, it's, it absolutely has, has astounded us. Um, I mean, we love it, but it's, it's been astounding what, what we found here. Um, now, so what I'd like to do now is to, is to tell you, uh, is to tell you what these 16 factors are. Um, so, so we can put some, kind of, uh, as we say, meat on the bones to, the, to this whole topic. Uh, and I need to start with just a little bit of theory. Next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry, I almost forgot. We should be on slide 27. Yeah. Right. Okay. There is a very well-known theory in, in organizational uh, psychology that says an individual's behavior inside uh, or in organizations is a function of three major uh, things. Their ability to do the job, their motivation to do it, and the work environment. So if we want certain behaviors to occur in the organization, we have to give people the ability we have to, to motivate them, and we have to have a work environment that supports it. Well, learning transfer is in fact just a behavior. 
that we're trying to create in an organization. Uh, we do it through learning, but it fundamentally is just an, a, a behavior. And so we use this, this kind of this meta theory, this meta framework, when we started building the tool. And I'm going to, so I'm going to talk about the factors in these three different groupings. <coughs> Next slide, please. 